Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It is June 25th, 2018, and today I'm going to break down a topic that a lot of I've seen a lot of confusion on Twitter and Facebook comments, and I really want to make this clear to everybody. The difference between geoengineering, SRM, and ERM. Now, most of you have never even heard of ERM. Um, and a lot of you have heard of solar radiation management or geoengineering to block sunlight. But there's a new one, new term out floating out there called earth radiation management. And it deals particularly with chemtrails. Um, and I really want to break this down in detail for you guys. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Um, I'd like to first start by th saying that you can find all of this information at climateviewer.com. It is right here under the chemtrails section. And um, everything you're about to see is free of charge, open source. And I only ask that if you're going to support me with a monthly donation, you do it on my Patreon. Or you can give a one-time donation. Um via PayPal. Just a heads up, I'm currently also doing a GoFundMe to fix my thyroid. Um, I'm suffering from Graves' disease. I'm feeling much better as a result of um, some of the things I've already purchased and dietary changes. I greatly appreciate everybody's uh, prayers, wishes, and suggestions. I'm using many of them and I'm feeling much better. Um, that being said, let's jump right into it. So I'm going to be over here on the chemtrail page. It is available at climateviewer.com slash cirrus clouds matter. And tonight, right before the show, I made an infographic for you. So what are we talking about? A tale of dirty clouds, greenwashing, geoengineering, biofuels for contrail control, and highly visible climate change. So... It's all of the above, um, but I wanted to really break down this SRM versus ERM thing, so I made this infographic here. And if you give me just one second, I'm going to bring that up on the screen, and let, let's uh, let's take a look see at it. So, as you can see here, I've um, I kind of laid out the whole thing in one picture, and this picture will be available for free to download to spread to whoever you like. And it is referenced. Um, so basically it goes like this. This is the sun. And this is solar radiation management. As we all know it, geoengineering to block sunlight. Now, most people who talk about chemtrails also refer to it as geoengineering. And it is geoengineering. Um, geoengineering is any scientific process that seeks to alter Earth's temperature or climate over the long term. Um, typically, the ones we're concerned about are what's known as stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, or spraying partic particulates, dust, metal, diamond dust even, um, into the sky to block sunlight. SRM. But the hidden part of this story is the ERM part, or what's been now dubbed Earth Radiation Management. So, whereas SRM blocks incoming sunlight and reflects it to space, and the idea being that if you block the sunlight, that it'll cool the planet. This is all based on, you know, the climate change, doom and gloom, Al Gore, you know, BS you hear about CO2. Um, and then the ERM side of things is really where I believe the chemtrail community should be focused. Whereas, you know, still focus on SRM, but if you don't understand what earth radiation management is or why they're even talking about it, then you're going to be stuck in the clouds. Your head will be clearly stuck in the clouds. So what's going on here? How does chemtrails work? And, you know, what does this matter? Well, I got it kind of laid out for you here. Typical jet airliner flying, you know, inter intercontinental flight, flying high in the altitude, making clouds. 
not going to debate about, you know, how the clouds are made. I personally believe that, you know, if you're talking about commercial aviation, that comes from jet fuel. If you're talking about secret flights, which are usually government, military, or, you know, like CIA, things like that, um, you know, sky's the limit. It could be pumps, it could be pipes, but even in their case, it more than likely is transported through jet fuel. It being metal particles. So metal particles and sulfur are the name of the game when it comes to geoengineering SRM. You can look at every single leading proposal for geoengineering solar radiation management, and they all involve stratospheric sulfur injection or stratospheric metal injection, like metals like aluminum, titanium, even calcium. Calcium is a huge one coming out of jet engines. Um, and all of these are contained within soot. Now soot is also known as black carbon or carbon black dust. Um, since 1958, uh, when the Navy first started creating clouds using carbon black soot to 1976, when they talked about steering hurricanes with carbon black dust, um, soot is the name of the game when it comes to cloud formation. What's important is that soot is a self-levitating cloud seed. So when planes um, burn fuel, out of the back, not only comes water vapor, like all the debunkers like to focus on, and even the you know meteorologists and, and you know flight attendants on down, they'll say, well, it's just water vapor. And the the thing you should say back to them, you say, it's water vapor that condenses on what? Because the condensation part is important. Yes, it's condensating, but it's condensating on a cloud seed, and that cloud seed is soot and what is in the soot and what's on the soot is what really matters so the soot is filled with metals and wrapped in sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide is emitted as well now david keith did a paper called um carbon black dust self levitation you know um photophoretic levitation of carbon black dust photophoretic levitation of carbon black dust and what he's talking about is because black carbon is black, it is heated by the sun and it rises. The Indian Space Organization found carbon black dust soot from airlines as high as 18 kilometers, meaning that soot tra transported itself from down where the planes were up through the ozone layer and the Indian Space Organization said that it was destroying the ozone layer and screwing with their monsoon rains. So, soot is a cloud seed that self-levitates. Soot transports sulfur into the stratosphere. Sulfur and soot destroy the ozone layer. Metals in soot make cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds cool during the daytime, SRM, over here. And cirrus clouds trap heat at night, ERM, earth radiation management. So what should normally happen is sunlight comes in, it heats the ground, and then at night that radiation, that long wave radiation goes back to space. But it's not. And the reason why is because planes are making clouds that trap that heat. Um, and that's led to you know statements like Dr. Ulrich Schumann from the German Aerospace Center. He wrote a paper called "Recent Research Result on Climate Impact of Contrail Cirrus and Mitigation Options." This was at the International Civil Aviation Organization Colloquium on Aviation and Climate Change 2010. He said we want less warming and more cooling contrails, predictable for operational planning. He went on to invent the contrail cirrus prediction tool, which is wrapped into the um, FAA's next gen transportation system and their aviation environmental design toolkit, AEDT. This predicts when they're gonna make clouds, whether they're gonna heat the planet or cool the planet. Carbon credits versus carbon taxes. 
Um, so I interviewed Dr. Rangasai Halthori from the FAA Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, ACRI. And I said, hey, what did Dr. Schumann mean by that? And he said, we would like to have more contrail-induced cirrus clouds, chemtrails, during the day and none during the night. So between these two statements from these two doctors who were both very involved in the planes making clouds business, they are very, very serious statements. They show intent, intent to say, screw you people. I know you're complaining about the chemtrails and I know you don't like cirrus clouds and I know you don't like planes making clouds and blocking out the sun, but our plan is to make them all day long to cool the planet and hopefully get rid of them at night. So many of you in the audience are probably scratching your head by now going, well, how the hell would you do that? Well, they have now come up with several different methods, one of which is called thinning cirrus clouds or cirrus cloud seeding. Um, Ken Caldera and company wrote a paper called Climate Change and Geoengineering Artificially Cooling Planet Earth by Thinning Cirrus Clouds. And in that paper, which was dubbed the Cocktail Geoengineering Paper, they said, If the time and place of seeding is selected with care, the climate effect of cirrus thinning can be enhanced. For that, only the long wave warming effect of cirrus clouds should be targeted and their solar effect should be avoided. This can be achieved if seeding is limited to high latitude winters or to nighttime seeding. And I'm gonna break that down for you. Only their long wave warming effect of cirrus clouds should be targeted, ERM, and their solar effect should be avoided, SRM. So this is not only accidental geoengineering, this is intentional geoengineering with contrail induced cirrus clouds or what we, the people on the internets, call it chemtrails. This is geoengineering 101 and it's stratospheric aerosol injection using carbon black dust wrapped in sulfuric acid. So if the carbon black dust takes itself up to 18 kilometers in the sky and it's wrapped in sulfuric acid along the way, metals like titanium, zirconium, vanadium, aluminum, barium, strontium, calcium, all of these metals free themselves from the soot on the travel upwards. 75% of cloud seeds uh, found in uh, cirrus clouds were man-made metals. This is something you cannot argue with. Um, so that's just the facts, people. Um, this is geoengineering. This is in, like I say at the top, you know, a, the goal of the chemtrail conspiracy is clear. Keep people distracted while scientists and military experiment in our skies with cloud making planes and ship tracks. Um, the agenda in a nutshell, more clouds by day, none by night. So despite all your outrage, despite all the complaints that we've had, um, their agenda is, screw you guys, we're going to keep making clouds because we need to. Now, I can prove this in any court of law. I've challenged any debunker on the planet or scientist or meteorologist to bring their ass on this YouTube uh, live broadcast. And I will, you know, gladly explain it to them and make them feel very small very quickly. Um, none have taken up that challenge. And that goes to anybody. And I do mean anybody underlined anybody. The truth of the matter is that we're all being hoodwinked and everybody's using language to try to circumvent your knowledge. And, you know, we really need to wrap our heads around how this works, why it's working and what their plans are. And if their plans are to continue to make clouds all day long and try to melt them away at night with things like bismuth triiodide, which is, you know, Pepto-Bismol, um, to use lasers to zap the, the cirrus clouds to make them go away. 
All you have to do to debate a scientist about this topic is don't call them chemtrails, call them cirrus clouds. It's that simple. I do it all the time and they get very frustrated. They're like, well, you're, you're really just talking about the chemtrail conspiracy. No, jackass. I'm talking about climate change. I'm talking about pollution. I'm talking about science. Um, do you even science? So um, I have another infographic right under that about cirrus cloud seeding. And this is from Ulrich Lohman and Blas Gasparini. And it was called a cirrus cloud climate dial. Um, and it was about cirrus cloud seeding and how they plan to melt all this away. So a couple articles on this. FAA scientists, we want to, we want clouds by day, none by night. And this was my interview with um, Dr. Rangasai Halthori from the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative. And I go through a couple things, you know. Um, and of it, here at the top, I got some questions and answers, you know, sessions. But I want to point this out for you guys because this is another very common misconception that this is a new thing. It is. It's not a new thing. Cla you know, since planes started flying, they started blanketing the sky with um, their clouds and blocking out the sun. And, you know, despite all that, they've never been regulated. Nobody's ever done anything about it. And up till 2001, they just assumed that they were only cooling the planet and making rain for, like, mountaintops and stuff like that. So they thought... It's a good thing. Yeah, this is good climate engineering. Um, but we'll get into when they learned that how bad that was and how Al Gore and his climate carbon tax guys came after their butts and they had to try to change their narrative. But regardless, as you can see here, Mystery of the Point Augusta Sky Trails, 1948. Residents were intrigued this morning by a trail of what appeared to be a thick white cloud stretching across the sky from southeast to northwest. Some residents claim that the trail came from an object, presumably a plane, traveling over the town at fast speed and very high altitude. The trail was probably made by exhaust gases and was clearly visible for up to 15 minutes. Former Air Force and Army men who have seen the high-altitude planes in action said they had not seen anything similar. They think the plane must be have been very big and of a new type. So there's your first earliest example of an article that I've been able to find. Um, and this shout out to Dominic Marama, weathermodificationhistory.com, my partner, um, for finding this one, 1948. Um, plain vapor trails. This one is from 1951. And it's also saying the same thing that, you know, hey, planes have been screwing with the sky since the, you know, 40s, 50s. Jet trails, dim sun, palm, palm springs, gripes, 1958, darn sky riders. The contrails are not disappearing, but are breaking down into a haze and creating a cloud-like appearance in the sky. Sound familiar? So, this has been going on forever and ever. Um, and people don't want to believe it. They don't want to think that that's a, a case. Well, they got sued in 1974 chemtrails. This is 1970, U.S. to clamp down on jet pollution. And I want you to see right here. The government will tell the nation's 43 commercial airlines Tuesday that they must end pollution of the skies with jet engine smoke by 1972 or face punitive legislation from Congress. In 1970, chemtrails were called smoke pollution of the sky. Jet engine smoke. You can't make this stuff up. So they were sued and they promised to install new burner cans or combustors. And they said that that would reduce particulate emission by 70%. Cut down on the soot. And that would make the clouds go away. Of course, that never happened. Here's another article also, Jet Pollution Hit, 1970, January 21. This is January 19th. Um, and this was 
basically the state of New Jersey and the state of Illinois sued the airline industry over making clouds. So what happened? You know, they were supposed to, you know, clean up their act by 1972 or face punitive legislation from Congress. That's Secretary of Transportation Volt. Nothing happened. Chicago, Illinois. Right here. This is Thursday, October 15th, 1981. Jet changing, jets changing climate for good or for ill. Jet vapor trails altering the climate over Chicago, Illinois. One of the states that sued in 1970, trails didn't go away, still blocking out sunlight, still covering the entire sky. I'm only pointing this out because there are so many people that believe that this is just a new thing. Um, this is from 1980, and this was NBC News, I believe. And they said, unlike most changes in the atmosphere caused by man, this one is beneficial, said Richard Simonin from the Illinois Institute of Natural Resources, one of the two states that sued over chemtrails in 1970. And, you know, ironically, they actually created a whole division at the Illinois Institute um, devoted specifically to studying contrails and how they form clouds and block out the sun. Um, quote, no one's trying to make clouds now using jet engines, but this study suggests that jet travel is inadvertently making our days more cloudy and someday weather researchers may be able to use jets on purpose to change our weather. And that is exactly what they are doing today. Boom. That is exactly what they are doing today. Watch the video, NBC News. Um, but then came... 9/11. So when the ter when the terrorists hit the towers or whether they were blown up by you know what um regardless 2000 uh September 12th 2001 all flights were grounded. Nobody was flying in the sky. And President George W. Bush was flying back to DC and he was escorted by two F16s and as you can see there are relatively no clouds. Imagine that. No planes, no clouds. Oh, wait, there, there was three planes making clouds, making shadows on the ground. You can see them there. This is Air Force One in the middle, and I imagine the two on the outside are two F-16s. But regardless, they were burning tail back to D.C., and the scientists got a clear shot of this. So from this, they determined in a paper called Regional Variations in U.S. Diurnal Temperature Range from the 11 through 14 September 2001 Aircraft Groundings, Evidence of Jet Contrail Influence on Climate. Um, and this was written by David Travis, and basically he said that they were affecting the diurnal temperature range, or the difference in temperature between day and night. So... On a normal day, without all these clouds, it would be warm during the day and get very cool at night because that heat could tra travel back to space, yada, yada. But because of our cloud bank overhead, it doesn't get as cool at night. But on this night, because there weren't any clouds, because all the flights were grounded, it got cooler than it should have. And that's why... This paper was written, and this was the first, oh crap, we're in trouble, happened. Um, and then very quickly after 2001, you see CBS News airs Sky Graffiti Warming Up Earth 2006. You can watch the video. Um, and it shows right there, kind of like my you know diagram, my infographic I made. This is trapping heat, this layer of clouds made by planes. New research su suggests that jet exhaust is four times better at trapping heat than ground emissions with contrails playing a critical role. Contrails form at high altitudes when hot jet engines pass through cold, moist air. The clouds spread out, trapping heat rising from the surface. 2006. Um, and then it happened again. And this time, it happened over the UK. And there was a volcano, and they grounded all flights. And there was an E3 AWACS doing circles right here. And by itself, it covered like 
two thirds of the UK, as you can see. So that one plane made this whole cloud bank here. Now I've had other scientists I talked to, um, Dr. Daniel Rosenfeld, I interviewed him at the weather modification conference this year. He said that, well, you know, this was actually much worse than it should have been because it was a lot of volcanic ash in the air. And I'll give him that maybe that contributed to it because volcanic ash is off also cloud seeds. But regardless, um, this paper, uh, you know, a 2000 eruption of the I Jaff Jal Jokul <laughs> grounded all flights over the UK, um, came up with the statement that said this, and this was by Jim Haywood, a single aircraft operating conditions favorable for persistent contrail formation appears to exert a contrail induced radiative forcing some 5,000 times greater than the recent estimates of the average persistent contrail radiative forcing from the entire civil aviation fleet. This study emphasizes the need to establish whether similar events are common or highly unusual for a confident assessment of the total climate effect of aviation to be made. So he's basically saying, look, you know, I mean, we're talking about CO2 here normally, but appears that, you know, planes making contrails that turn into cirrus clouds are heating the planet 5,000 times greater than the entire air aviation fleet, you know, what our guess was. That's big news. And that was in 2009. Haywood et al. 2009. Um, then you go to the Cooperative Institute of Research for Environmental Science. Stratospheric aerosol increased surprisingly rapidly in that time, almost doubling during the decade. Daniel said the increase in aerosols since 2000 implies a cooling effect. Well, the increase in aerosols is due to all these planes spraying them up there. Big surprise. Um, and then the BBC, of course, tried to spin this and says, after all the data was analyzed, there was an increase in temperature. That suggests that contrails cool the planet. Are you, what are you kidding me? So anyway, um, last statement from this bank, Chuck Long from NOAA's Earth Systems Research Lab said, he suggests that a high altitude ice haze created by water and other emissions, other emissions being metal and soot, um, is responsible. I'm talking about a sub-visual contrail generated haze of ice, which we do not classify as a cloud, but gives the blue sky a more whitish tint. So many of you have observed this. You see overhead, it's partially blue. And then as you start to look towards the horizon, it's whiter and whiter and whiter. Well, that's because not only are they making these clouds, but they're putting up these nanoparticles of ice, which are very fine, which will stay up there forever. They are loaded with metals. That is geoengineering. It is whitening the sky, according to Chuck Long. Um, and you know, this has led to articles like cloud blanket warms melt up melting ice cap. Greenland ice sheet melts more when it's cloudy. Clouds enhance Greenland ice sheet meltwater runoff and clouds like blankets trap heat and are melting the Greenland ice sheet. So, you know, you can see my interview with Dr. Rangasai Hawthori here. I need to redo this in bed right here, but regardless, you can download the original document by clicking here and hitting save and just open that bad boy up and what you'll see is an interview with Dr. Rangasai Halthori and I you know asked him a lot of questions and out of that came you know the we want more clouds by day none by night so this is you know a real thing this is really their agenda um I hope that you guys will read that paper. It's pretty interesting. I, I thought I had it up on the right screen. I didn't. It's right. Sure. Um, but more CI. Right there. 
Uh, what do you think of Ulrich Schumann, man, when I said when he said less warming, more cooling contrails predictable for operational control? He said we would like to have more CICs during the day and none during the night. And by CICs, he's talking about contrail-induced cirrus. That's what the scientards call um, chemtrails. Chemtrails is so much more fun to say. Regardless, um, that's their plan. They're sticking to it. And I've got all the references down here at the bottom. You can go through these. Cirrus cloud seeding, which is true story Elmo. Um, you know, on the climate response to cirrus cloud seeding. You can see it on weathermodificationhistory.com. Laser vaporization of cirrus-like ice particles with secondary ice multiplication. Zapping clouds with lasers could tweak planet's temperature. Um, you can't make this stuff up. So, not only are they talking about spraying chemicals into the sky to get rid of the plane farts, um, but they're also talking about shooting laser beams at them to break the ice crystals into smaller parts. So is what Chuck Long seeing already a result of cirrus cloud thinning and you know thinning them out so that you guys can't see them, so that they're just doing their geoengineering by whitening the sky but not being so visible? Um, I don't know, you tell me. But there you go. You can't make that up. Zapping clouds with lasers could tweak planet's temperature. This is called cirrus cloud thinning. Just like I'm talking about here in this article. So they have two different methods for that. Over here on the other article, cirrus clouds matter. Geoengineering with cirrus cloud seeding. Um, that's exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about spraying chemicals to get rid of them by day and none by night. How seeded cirrus clouds cool the planet. Cirrus clouds reflect some sunlight and absorb long wave radiation. On balance, they warm the climate. Cirrus cloud thinning aims to change the radiated pro properties of cirrus clouds by reducing their lifetime and altitude at which they form. And they got a little drone up here spraying out ice nucleating particles, also known as cloud condensation nuclei, also known as geoengineering dust. Um, but their idea is to go up there and spray a bunch of chemicals into the clouds and thin them out or melt them away. So these are facts. Um, you can't argue with these facts. So um, I said this to the EPA when I went there and, you know, went to the... ...of the particles to get a big effect on these clouds. The latest research casts doubts on the IPCC's contrail assumptions and requires serious consideration when addressing the real climate change impact of aviation. High altitude metals and cirrus cloud condensation nuclei are likely coming from leaded avgas and jet exhaust. Contrails are making cirrus clouds and small changes in atmospheric metal have large impacts on cirrus cloud creation. Cirrus clouds trap heat and are likely to have a greater impact, climate change impact than CO2. Finally, aviation induced cloudiness endangers future growth in solar energy, affects tourism, and spending, and is projected to make terrestrial astronomy impossible by 2050. That was me in 2015 raising hell about clouds making, you know, planes making clouds and how it's going to affect solar power, how it affects people's spending patterns. Um, that's one of the reasons that Illinois and New Jersey sued to begin with in 1970. People don't like bad weather. They like sunny days. Um, and you know, terrestrial astronomy, we're talking about telescopes, people. Don't you don't you want your grandchildren to be able to see the stars? Well, um that's not gonna happen if they have their way. Like I said, their plan is more clouds by day, none by night. So they're not listening to us. They don't care. Their plan is to geoengineer um, the sky using ship tracks and contrails, period. Um, and their, their method of doing this is clear. Uh, for me, it's jet fuel. You know, I've got many scientific references proving that. Um, and you can see, you know, the, the two quotes on that, you know, about how it's heating the planet. Um, 
you know, of course, clouds are the main driver on climate change on Earth. Um, check out Heinrich, Heinrich Svensmark or the Cloud Mystery. Uh, watch his documentary. It's great how it talks about how clouds are more important than CO2. Jasper Kirkby CERN project, which showed that, you know, basically trees cloud seed. And, you know, if we just quit screwing with the climate, the trees could make all the clouds we ever needed. Um, but what happened was EPA was going to limit the greenhouse gases from airplanes. White House releases federal alternative jet fuel research and development strategy like a week later. And then this is all during the Trump election. China, U.S., Europe pledged support for global aviation emissions pact. So the ICAO promised to clean up its act. Um, Greens moved to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. So then the people who originally brought up the lawsuit, the one that the hearing I attended and screwed up for them, they threw that whole thing out. Um, and now they've even gone on to complain about this biofuels for contrail control. But this is where Ulrich Schumann said it, less warming and more cooling contrails, predictable for operational planning. Dr. Rangasai Halthori, more clouds by day, no by night. And Ken Calder and company, we can do seeding in the high latitude winters and nighttime seeding. So that's the plan, guys, is to, to melt the clouds away. A whole lot on a cirrus cloud climate dial here. Um, if cirrus thinning works, it should be preferred over methods that target changes in solar radiation, such as stratospheric aerosol injection. So they even go on to say, hey, if we can do cirrus cloud thinning, ERM, then we'll never have to do SRM. Unfortunately for her, they're both happening at the same time, and it's happening because of airline, you know, spraying metals and soot and sulfur into the sky every single day. Not to mention the CIA and any of the other secret, you know, military high flying plane that is burning different types of fuels that make even thicker, whiter clouds. Um, and God forbid if any of those secret government agencies actually are using pumps and pipes to, you know, do ge geoengineering stratospheric aerosol injection directly. Um, that's going to take a FOIA to prove, but I'd be glad to send that FOIA. Bismuth triiodide has been suggested as a non-toxic and affordable substance for serious seeding. Other substances such as mineral dust should work as well. You mean like David Keith's aluminum nanoparticle idea. A small scale deployment of cirrus cloud seeding therefore can be envisioned, for instance, in the Arctic to avoid further melting of the Arctic Sea. Governance of such local climate engineering might be easier to achieve. And the reason why is because there's something called the Arctic Council. And according to Ken Caldera's geoengineering group or forum, um, there was a scientist that said that people would be in an uproar if they knew what the Arctic Council was up to. So I highly suggest people look into the Arctic Council and what they're doing when it comes to cirrus cloud seeding, cirrus cloud thinning, and geoengineering solar radiation management. Oh, and also earth radiation management. This is cirrus cloud seeding. Suggested uh, material. Bismuth triiodide, seeding via commercial airliners, question mark. So they even talk about putting it in the jet fuel of the planes like Delta and Southwest to try to cut down on the thickness of the clouds to thin them out. Advantage, seeding aerosol residence time relatively short in the troposphere. Drawbacks does not address ocean acidification issue or what we used to call acid rain. Um, but regardless, that's what's going on, people. This is this is all, you know, open source as a mofo right here. Jim Haywood and all a case state study in the radiative forcing of persistent contrails evolving into contrail induced cirrus. Yes, contrails turn into cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds Hashtag cirrus clouds matter and cirrus cloud seeding and cirrus cloud thinning and making more clouds during the day is their plan. 
And this is all something called biofuels for contrail control. Um, I cover this in depth. You know, you guys have seen me talk about biofuels a lot. Um, <laughs> give, give me just one second to bring up something funny. Um, but I wrote about all of this in a paper called Accidental Geoengineering with Ship Tracks and Contrails. I posted this on climatex.mit.edu. So you can see that over here. One second while I bring this up. Get, find this picture real quick because this is too funny. Where's it at? Keep on going. There it is. Biofuels for contrail control. So if you've never heard of a biofuel, check this picture out. It's going to make you go, hmm. How, see how your waste could be used as jet fuel. That is a biofuel. Now, I know that you think they're shitting on you. Now they really are shitting on you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is B from BP. They just posted this, and I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but you can see household waste turned into jet fuel right there with a link. I haven't even ever even clicked the link. Biofuel set to take off as construction begins on waste to fuel plant. BP, we be peeing on you. Um, biofuels for control control. And you can Google that, that's a thing. Biofuels for contrail control. Hit that up, it's right here and that's that's their plan jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control this is dated 2013 um this was before my epa hearing so they're gonna like use biofuels to try to take control of the jet farts um and get these cirrus clouds in line with what they want they want more clouds by day that cool and less by night that um heat the planet well guess what it isn't just about the chemtrails because there are even bigger chemtrails this is from mit we're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming and they are referring to ship tracks as you can see here um what's the date on this january 30th 2013 so i'm gonna go over to climateviewer.org do 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 and I'm going to click on NASA satellites and I'm going to go to the 367 band because it's sexy. And we're going to go to 2013 and we're going to go to January and we're going to go to 30. And there's the photo. So, see? Same thing. All right, we're back. All right, so these are ship tracks. Now I want you to compare those ship tracks to the size of California. See, pretty darn large. And as you can see by my scale, this is 30 kilometers. So 30, 90, 120, you get the picture. These are hundreds and thousands of miles long. Now, these ship tracks would not be visible were for it not for my special 367 band, which is a, a special band on the uh modus terra satellite that highlights ship tracks as you can see if i do the same thing here and i come up to january 30th 2016 look they disappear they reappear see this one right here you can't see that ship track but with a special band they can this is visible this is with the special chemtrail monitoring equipment they have. So, ship tracks make uh, contrail induced cirrus clouds look tiny and cover the entire ocean. So, that's why I want you guys to remember to focus on them as well. They're not over your house, but they're many times the problem. And especially for you in California, as you can see, it appears that these ship tracks have basically made so many clouds that there's no water vapor left for you in California. That is called overseeding. 
So one of the big problems with this whole cirrus cloud seeding idea is that if you put too many seeds into the sky, you can shut rain off. That is called overseeding. That is what you're seeing in this picture right here is ships. And there's another big white line there. Um, they make what's called marine stratocumulus clouds. And if enough international ships are out there, there will be no water vapor left to make clouds. There will be no clouds. There will be no rain. There will be a California drought as clearly visible in this shot. Um, and that's what's going on on a regular basis. So that was the focus of my article on MIT was that ship tracks, they said we're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming. And they were talking about how um, ships are going to use bunker fuel. And bunker fuel is loaded with sulfur, just like the, the planes are. The planes, whenever they, they've got their plan for biofuels and you know geoengineering the planet, their, their plan includes using two jet fuels in one tank, biofuels on takeoff, and then a fuel loaded with sulfur when they get up to altitude. Why? Because, like I show in my graphic, the soot will carry the sulfur up into the stratosphere. Stratospheric sulfate injection. Um, it's geoengineering, people. So this image is free of charge. Free, feel free to share it anywhere you like. And it's got the references built into it already. But if you want the big picture, come over to climateviewer.com slash Cirrus Clouds Matter. Um, and, and, you know, dig into this thing because the bottom line is we know everything we need to act on this. Um, you know, there are a couple, you know, jackasses in the chemtrail community that do not want you to believe that jet fuel has anything to do with this. But I would point out to them that, you know, they can't argue with you know, quotes like these, use commuter, commuter aircraft fuels doped with aerosol generators. That's Dr. William Cotton. I interviewed him at this year's weather modification conference. And that's exactly what he says. Uh, I said here in Virginia, perhaps commuter, commuter aircraft with uh, jet fuels doped with aerosols and that. Uh, Use commuter aircraft with jet fuels, dope with aerosols and that. I mean, this is exact words. This was from 2008. As you can see here. Derp a derp. Monday, 21st, April 2008. Weather and Climate Engineering by Dr. William R. Cotton. Um, so that's their plan all along was to dope jet fuel. So I'm going to bring up another really nice one for you guys by going to weathermodificationhistory.com and I'm going to do a page search for doped. And what you'll see is doped jet fuel sulfur content geoengineering. And their plan is contained in this one paper right here. I'll bring the actual paper up so everybody at home can see it. And this is their paper in a nutshell. Impacts of aviation fuel sulfur content on climate and human health. Okay. Now that paper says applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitude combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel or biofuel at lower altitude results in a reduced aviation induced mortality and increased negative RE compared to the baseline aviation scenario. What they are saying is if we use biofuels on takeoff, we'll create less carbon black dust, soot, around airports, which will kill less people. And then when we get to altitude, use high sulfur jet fuel to mimic a Pinatubo effect or the Mount Pinatubo eruption to do stratospheric sulfate injections to inject sulfur directly into the stratosphere and the ozone layer to do geoengineering solar radiation management. That is exactly what they're doing. David Key, self-levitating um, soot. Photophoretic levitation could loft particles above the stratosphere, reducing their capacity to interfere, interfere with ozone chemistry. Um, so they still have to pass through the ozone layer, David. So sorry. 
His paper was called Photophoretic Levitation of Engineered Aerosols for Geoengineering, and he was specifically referring to soot. Um, and the Indian Space Organization say they now have evidence of such particles existing up to 18 kilometers in the sky in the stratosphere and there are about 10,000 uh, in every cubic centimeter. 10,000 uh, particles of soot per centimeter at 18 kilometers in height. It could only derive the emissions from aviation fuel. So that's what's going on and how do they want to do this? They want to do this two fuels one tank US patent number there fuel system for vapor trail control fuel delivery system another patent ice supersaturated air or what's called ISSRs ice supersaturated regions that's how you see a plane fly through make a cloud come out not make a cloud fly through the next one make a cloud fly out not make a cloud those are called ISSRs they're bubbles of water in the sky so some of what the debunkers say is true there you know atmospherics do play a role in this but um, you can't always make clouds, even with your powder contrail generation, powder, you know, clouds require three things, water vapor, dust, and electricity. Um, and, you know, a charge to make them stick together. And the, the, they're trying to master this so that they can geoengineer the way they want. Because guess what? If they keep trapping heat, they're going to end up paying carbon taxes instead of getting carbon credits for cooling the planet. And this is the ultimate uh, U.S. patent application of doom. Control unit and method for controlling the supply of a vehicle with multiple fuels. That's how it works. The Jet Fuel Electronic Control Unit, ECU, can switch between biofuel and sulfur-doped fuel and the pilot never even know it. Ulrich Schumann with his Contrail Cirrus Prediction Tool, the FAA with their Aviation Environmental Design Toolkit, AEDT, they can remotely switch between the fuels. Control, remote control cloud creation. These are all facts, indisputable. I will say these in front of Congress, the UN, any. I'll debate them with any scientist. These are the facts. So this is the goal right now, is to geoengineer the planet using jet fuel to do it by day and get rid of it by night. It being the cirrus clouds over your head. Cirrus clouds are created by aircraft, both civilian, commercial, and military secret unmarked government program, which could be a geoengineering program funded by the CIA. But as far as the military is concerned, they do it with jet fuel. And guess who controls the military's jet fuel? NATO. And who are the countries that are covered in clouds? NATO countries. All 28 of them, not a coincidence. My next video, I should probably re-bring up the whole NATO single fuel concept thing and how it coincides with the beginning of the word, first use of the word chemtrail. But regardless, it's in the jet fuel. It's in the jet fuel. It's in the jet fuel. I could go on and read you every single reference from this paper um, on the jet fuel, you know, dissolved or suspended in their jet fuel and later burned with the fuel to create seeding aerosol, IOP science. Options for dispersing gases from planes include addition of sulfur to the fuel. The list goes on and on and on. That's This is the plan, guys. I mean, you just can't argue with this. I mean, that's the plan. The plan is to inject sulfur into the sky, cool the planet using planes, um, and if not to, you know, melt them away, stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft, commercial aircraft could be used to deliver sulfate into the stratosphere by increasing fuel sulfur content. 
All right, those are the facts, and I'm sticking to it. I made the infographic. I want you guys to research it. Earth radiation management versus solar radiation management. Solar radiation management is blocking incoming sunlight to cool the planet. Earth radiation management is dealing with chemtrails, dealing with ship tracks, dealing with cirrus clouds, because cirrus clouds matter. So uh, if you guys get educated on the terminology, if you understand these facts, you will be able to debate them with any scientist, meteorologist, politician, and we will be able to make a difference. Um, I greatly hope that you guys do pay attention to this because never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So it's you small few, you brave few, <laughs> who are going to learn this information and we're going to change the world together. And I hope that my children and their children... Uh, my grandchildren are able to see the stars because right now the projections are that by 2050 there will be no visible stars from planet Earth. B because of increase in airline traffic, because obviously their plans are to do, you know, continue making clouds despite our outrage, despite our cries. So, one thing you can do for certain is support. My Environmental Modification Accountability Act, which will bring accountability to even programs like this where they're trying to geoengineer and get away with it and not tell a soul. Um, and you can find that at climateviewer.com slash nmod. Um, I would love to read through the chat. It will, you know, videos coming up on an hour right now already. And, you know, nobody has the time to watch an hour long video except for the extremely dedicated but this is an extremely complicated topic so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i hope that you will take the time to understand it share it with others i hope that you will support me on uh patreon and paypal and if not you know hit me up on the gofundme i'm trying to fix my thyroid you could purchase some rain soul and that'll also benefit me i am using this stuff I am feeling much better than I did a month ago. Um, you probably can tell by you know my demeanor. But regardless, I want to continue to fight this fight and educate people with tangible evidence, not just a whole lot of fear porn and screaming at the sky because shaking our fists at the moon will do nothing. Um, we really need to get educated and consolidate, get our feces consolidated so that we can make a difference on this problem. And allowing them to just continue to make clouds by day and none by night, that's, that's not a deal for me. I want, how about no clouds? I want the plan to be that planes and ships stop making clouds, that we start planting more trees. And on that note, that's why I did the video, geoengineering and breaking the water cycle. I really hope that you guys will read this. Um, you know, I, got all, I did this for the Red Pill Expo, um, but the purpose of this video is to say, look, we can fix all of this and stop this geoengineering madness cycle by planting trees, by um, you know, cleaning up the plastic in the ocean, and by reducing the use of pesticides or what's called biosyn, sin bio, synthetic biology, genetically modified organisms like genetically modified salmon, genetically modified bacteria that are released into the wild. Um, that's a real solution that I, can, that I stand by firmly. Plant trees, and a lot of this will go away. Um, but their solution, of course, which I've covered in great detail tonight, is let's make all the clouds we possibly can because we really like screwing with the sky and screwing with you guys and being you know meteorologists mocking the crap out of you get educated use that information knowledge is power and remember that with that power comes responsibility so i kindly ask you to attack ideas not people if this video resonates with you leave me a comment because i love hearing from you all first time here be sure to subscribe and click the bell the bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, 
It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.